sewage. It turns out garbage isn't the only kind of waste that can help the U.S. reduce its use of fossil fuels like oil. While petroleum is used mostly for transportation, almost 5% of the oil we consume goes into making plastics, like shopping bags and water bottles. That's where the sewage comes in and out. More from Energy Now's Lee Patrick Sullivan in this Energy Next. Okay, there's no easy way to say this, but to just come out and say it. The folks at this lab in Northern California say they can make plastic out of poop. Well, you know, it's funny, a lot of these ideas that seem like they're really out of nowhere, they're sort of unusual ideas, um, have actually been incubating in the academic and industrial spheres for a long time. It's been known for some time that there's a chemical in wastewater that can be used to make plastic. And if you could extract this chemical at a reasonable cost, it could compete with the major source of plastic products, fossil fuels. The U.S. uses the equivalent of 300 million barrels of oil a year on plastics. But the folks at Micromitis say that could change. What we said was, you know, it looks like it's ready to go. Why don't we, there's a little bit of, there's a gap of engineering that needs to be done to bring it to commercial scale. Why don't we take that, you know, cross the gap, and then we've got, you know, we have something that's real. The something real isn't just an oil-free plastic. It's a technology that could turn the sludge that builds up in wastewater treatment plants into a valuable commodity. Are you getting tired of all those corny reporter yeah. puns that go on. No, you know, it's not. Which I thought of a whole list of them on my way here. Like, uh, uh, do you consider yourself having a crappy job? If someone steals your ideas, are they stool pigeons? I mean, yeah. I have about 11 of them. Stool pigeons? I haven't heard that one well, yet. So that's an original. That's a good one. That's yeah. original, yeah. But if Bissell's big idea takes off, he may have the last laugh. Wastewater sludge, that nastiness that settles at the bottom of these large tanks, is an expensive problem for sewer authorities across the country. Wastewater treatment plants, like this one in Sacramento, process more than 150 million gallons of wastewater a day. You can see the clean water here. This is what goes back to the river. When the treated water is released into a river or to the ocean, it leaves behind sludge that's mostly burned or trucked away to places like landfills or farms. The idea of taking wastewater sludge and turning it into a bioplastic is, is pretty, pretty nice. It's a pretty good idea. More than 4 million tons of sludge gets hauled away each year, costing sewer operators as much as $200 million annually. Micromitis says it can cut the cost of hauling sludge in half. You guys have some sludge for me to look at? Yeah, here we go. This is the stuff. So it doesn't smell that bad. No, it's really not. I mean, it smells a lot worse than this. It actually smells kind of nice. Did you just nice. stick your nose in it? <laughs> yeah, but no, it smells different. It smells uh, better, actually. Anything for good television. <laughs> not that bad. bad. It's, right? it's, it's, it almost... Oh, oddly smells a little bit like melted plastic. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah, no. The liquid that's extracted from the sludge contains the molecules needed to make plastic. This is what it looks like. The step right after that, it looks almost just a little bit like a, like chicken broth. Like, okay, I bet you it doesn't taste like chicken broth. I've never tasted it. You okay, <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> now this is where Micromitis makes its money. They add a cocktail of designer microbes or bacteria to the liquid. And that's uh, literally, there. we are brewing plastic. After it's run through a so-called extruding machine, the plastic cools and can be handled. So this is this, what the plastic looks this like. This was made out of poop. Right, if correct. It has a, the thickness of like a really thin windbreaker. Is yeah. Is that, that probably a good example? And actually, it, you know, it's, it's not I, I got to smell it. Yeah, go ahead. It smells like plastic. Bissell says the company is looking for applications that don't require tough kinds of plastic, so don't look for auto parts to be made out of this stuff. Realistically, what we're looking for are tertiary packaging applications. Tertiary? What in the world does that mean? Tertiary, Latin in root, meaning third in line. Primary packaging, Secondary packaging, tertiary packaging. Now another example of tertiary packaging is those little plastic rings that come on packs of drinks. And also the plastic that wraps products on pallets at just about every single big box store in the country. Here at this one Home Depot store, they get 25,000 of these pallets delivered every single year. That's a lot of tertiary packaging. 
Now, there are other bioplastics on the market, but they come from plants and are generally more expensive than petroleum-based plastics. Bissell says plastic made from wastewater treatment sludge can compete with its petroleum counterpart and maybe even come in cheaper. One good thing is you're never going to run out of raw materials, are you? One would hope not, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> in Sacramento, California, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Energy Now. A group of engineering and microbiology graduates from the University of California, Davis, founded Micromitis, the company in Lee Patrick's piece. The outfit now employs 20 people, and its product is supposed to hit the market next year.